Welcome to Game and Box, and today I'm looking at Cholo by Firebird uh, for the BBC Micro Model B, as distinguished on the packaging up there. Now, Cholo is a classic uh, wireframe 3D computer game uh, with uh, non-linear gameplay, and it was originally released in 1986 on the BBC Micro, but it was also ported to other 8-bit systems such as the Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64. It's similar to uh, Drill in its style of gameplay where you control a ship from a first person perspective. Uh, basically the premise is following a nuclear war humanity is trapped underground by a robot defense system but rules via radiated surface. Uh, your character assumes control of this robot drone transmitting to a terminal below ground and is given the task of freeing the trapped humans. So you're actually on the ground and you're controlling this drone through a computer terminal, much like most of the army work which is done today. The surface of Cholo smoulders and glows. No oceans, no trees, no life. Only post-nuclear fallout and instant suntan. The days pass slowly in the confines of the bunkers and shelters beneath Cholo's ravaged surface. You pass away your pointless life working at the terminal and listening to the committee reports from Cholo... Co Cho I think it... pretty sure it's called Cholo. Top style, Colo. One piece of software is very popular, RAT, a computer game guiding robots and roving eyes in, a, in a, around a shattered city. A similar... God, good God, man! Talk properly! A city similar to the ones that scatter the surface, maybe too similar. Could you really be in contact with Topside, and if so, where is the lethal radiation which is reported in the official committee bulletins? Well, so maybe some... Slightly false information given there. Now, normally Game & Box games have something interesting in the packaging, and this is no exception. Of course, we get the 5 and a quarter inch disc. There it is, with the um, Telecom logo up there. Firebird software logo, 1986. Copyright 1986, Solid Image Limited, and they developed this title. 40 is the track this side, and 80 is the track the other side. There we go. Pop that back in its protective sleeve. In here you find something which has not got anything to do with the game at all. But we find this ah, beautiful, beautiful map. Now this is... Let's see if I can get this. Move the camera back a second. There we go. Tech Sheet NN4471-40 and we have a layout of the facility there. And down the bottom we have known robots. We've got lead coat, bid bot, rat droid, hacker, fly flying eye, auto dock guard, and grunder. And yeah, this is, I love stuff like this. It's the sort of thing you could just put on your wall and it made your bedroom feel like some sort of central intelligence hub. And it, you know, it, was, it just brought the whole experience more it's a reality, didn't it? it? It triggered your imagination and made the whole experience just that little bit more realistic. BBC loading instructions. Insert your Cholo game disc and drive zero. Hold down shift and press break. After a short delay, the loading screen will be displayed and the Cholo music will start to play. Press any key to move on to the load game section. Excellent. On the back we have the key guide. Quite an extensive array of keys, as is often the case with these games. Turn left, pitch up, you know, it's a sort of one, but you play it a couple of times and then those keys are memorised into your head for all of eternity. We also get a rather hefty manual here. I like the style of these manuals. Heavy font down the side, soft edges and just black. Objective. It is important that you read the manual so that you fully understand the consequences of the Holocaust and the enormity of the plight facing the human race trapped in their nuclear bunker. More importantly, you will understand the full extent of your responsibility for their future. You know, we miss manuals like this now, which really kind of set the scene for you and kind of brought you into the game itself. That's what all this packaging was about. You look at the front, your imagination is triggered, you open the box, you get stuff like this, it's triggered even more. You look at the manual, you read the story, and you're in the world before you even start the game. And once you're in the game, this wireframe is translated into the wonderful, glorious world it is supposed to be in your mind. Got the details on the screen, damage, map, message area, radiation, compass, 
RAM packs. These four RAM packs are used to hold programs and text files. Mm, sites. We've got some maps here, the central computer building. Details on swapping programs. Land a ship teleporter. Oh, we've got a little, like a poem here. In the beginning was the light, and the light grew brighter, so that the sun paled in its majesty, and in the end was a darkness, and its evil was mightier than the evil of Beelzebub. And after the storms came the rains of foul pestilence, a wind blew that stripped the land of life, and laid bare the very soul of the earth, so that nothing stirred but vapours of poison. And the land became ash, and the waters sick, defiled with a filth that would not cleanse, and the sky itself was soiled with blood, so that the earth wept with the pain. Then the single seed planted deep against unholy fire crackled and flexed and began to stir at last. And we get a whole story here, which is often the case, especially with these uh, BBC big package games. The heat was becoming intolerable, as was my um, pronunciation of the word intolerable. And again, a thin line of sweat trickled down the left side of Jard's nose. He wiped the back of his greasy hand across his eyes and blinked in the flickering amber night. I'm not going to read this entire story, but safe to say, it's a bestseller. Or perhaps it should have been. In any case, definitely set the scene for this game. It's quite a long one. Wow, imagine that. You could read this in bed at night. After playing the game in the daytime, saving the knowledge that at 8am in the morning you could flick it back on and get back to the task at hand. And with discs, you could save the game as well, so you didn't have to start from the start every time. So, there we have it. There is Cholo for the BBC Micro. Yeah, apparently Firebird is a trademark of British Telecommunications PLC. Uh, interesting. Anyway, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed this game and box. I will leave you with the mandatory game footage at full screen. Thanks for watching.